G'day, g'day, and welcome to another episode of Kiwi Car Life. And today we're going to be talking all about VTEC. First, a little history. VTEC was launched in 1989 with the Honda NSX, and if you click up there, you can see my review of one. And in essence, Honda wanted to create two engines in one. At low RPM, you had a small little efficient engine for taking your girlfriend home after a nice date. And then at high RPM, you had a fire-breathing monster. First, let's go over the dual overhead cam engines. And to show you, I made this. Oh, it's falling apart already. Fantastic. Now in a normal engine, it's gonna look something like this. You're gonna have your camshaft, and you're gonna have a couple lifters, and these are gonna push down on a couple of valves. When this turns around, it's gonna push the lifters down, open up the valves, let in the air and fuel, then when it comes back around again, it's gonna shut the valves, so you can have your big boom town. Now with a Honda engine, things are a little bit different, because as you can see, we've got three cam loads now. And the way it works, these ones here are still acting on the valves, this one isn't, so when you're not in VTEC, it just runs like a normal engine. These ones here are opening the valves just enough to make it nice and efficient. But when you engage VTEC, when you get to about 6,000 RPM or so, then a pin locks all three of these together. Now, it would normally be activated by an oil pump in the engine, but I'm not quite that fancy. Now they're all locked together and then you'll see what happens when the big cam comes around, it lifts up all three of them to the opening of the big cam. And then of course opens up the valves more, lets in more air and fuel, and then the same on the exhaust side, lets out more exhaust gases, so you get a bigger bang and more power. Once the 2000s rolled around, Honda switched to a thing called IV Tech, and the only difference there, camshafts and everything work in exactly the same way, but they added variable valve timing. And what that allows it to do is to phase the camshaft in or out of sync of where it would normally sit to make the engine more efficient at certain RPMs. So that was Doc VTEC and Doc IVTEC, the two most well-known performance variants. Now we'll move into some other less performancey ones. This one here is called Doc IVTEC E. And the way it works is uh, the exhaust camshaft is just a normal camshaft. There's no VTEC or anything on it. But on the intake, you have a big cam and a very, very, very small cam. And the way that works is uh, when you're at low RPM or low load, uh, it will run off both cams, but uh, this one here will only be opened a very, very tiny amount, and this one will be opened a normal amount. And what that'll do is in your combustion chamber, it's actually upside down, but in your combustion chamber, it'll generate a swirl effect because it's only really coming in one side, it'll swirl around, and for some reason it makes it more efficient. Then when you get to higher RPM, what it'll do, it'll engage VTEC and it'll lock the one that's barely opening to the normal cam and then both valves will run off the normal size cam to provide the right air and fuel mixture. VTEC Turbo is a more modern addition to the VTEC family and it's only on the exhaust side unfortunately. The intake side is just normal cams like what I showed you at the start and what it'll do when you don't need too much boost then uh, it'll just cruise along run off the normal size cams and then when you need some big time boost gang in your new Civic Type R then it'll uh, lock them all together, run it off the big cam, let out lots more exhaust gases, help spool up that turbo, and then when you're done spooling the turbo, it'll just go back to the normal cams. Sock VTEC is used on your less performancey single overhead cam Honda engines. It works in much the same way as Doc VTEC, except of course it's only got one camshaft, which means it can only put VTEC on the intake side. So there's nothing on the exhaust side, just works like normal cams, the intake side, is the only one that has the VTEC, and as a result, it's not quite as performancey as your good old Doc VTEC. And then the next one there is Sock IVTEC, and that is obviously exactly the same, but adds the variable valve timing as well. Sock VTEC E works exactly the same as Doc VTEC E that I mentioned before, where you have one tiny little opening cam and one normal size cam, and uh, to improve efficiency, it has this one cam open just a tiny little bit to create that swirl effect in the combustion chamber. And then uh, when you want to go boom town again, then it locks them together, runs them both off the normal size cam, and off you go. 
And then the next one there is SOC IVTEC-E, and that is obviously exactly the same, but thanks to that letter I being in there, it adds the variable valve timing as well. And then last of all, we have SOC IVTEC VCM, and this combines three different technologies. You've got SOC VTEC, which of course is just your VTEC, but only on the intake side. IVTEC, which of course adds the uh, variable valve timing, and VCM, which is variable cylinder management. So what that means is that it's able to run the V6 on six cylinders, or as like a V4, or as an inline three. If you want to see some more reviews of various Hondas that have some mad dot VTEC, then click up here to see a review of an FN2 Civic Type R. Click over here to see a review of a NSX. Click down here to see a review of my CL9 Accord UOR. And click down here to see a review of my DC5 Integra Type R. And most of all, thank you for watching.